Well, that was just over uh, six months ago. What a day it was. Argyle's biggest and probably best win of the season. Now, with just five weeks to go, things are a little less cheery. Ian Foster's men travel to the most difficult place to get results in the championship at the moment. Carrow Road is almost impenetrable right now. Norwich City are unbeaten here since November, and it's the first trip to the home of the Canaries for 15 years. Will it, though, be a memorable one for the Green Army? Well, hello. Good afternoon. This is the pre-match show on Argyle TV. I am Charlie Price. And after a little break, we are back for the final run-in. And things are getting pretty serious at the moment. Just two points separating Argyle from the relegation places. Eight matches to go. The first of which is against playoff and promotion chasing Norwich City. Keen to get back to the Premier League after a two-year hiatus. Six straight wins for them at their home. That is the task for Argyle today. Um, It is going to be pretty nervy over the next five weeks or so. But we have you covered here on Argyle TV and you can follow all of the action over the Easter weekend, today and Monday, with us here. We've got you covered. Match passes can be bought from our website for just £10 and you can stream the game from wherever you are in the world today as well. Well, helping us through today and um, over the next couple of days as well. It's going to be a busy man. Good job. You're looking pretty refreshed after your two-week break in Stonebridge. Um, it's a big one today. It all, they're all big ones. They absolutely are. I think it's um, obviously all, all the things you just said about Norwich's recent form. You know, it's a, it's a daunting prospect, but at the same time, Argyle can go there, I think, in, in an optimistic mood. They've, they've gone to places where the expectation was low so far this season and, and pulled out some results that, that perhaps were unexpected. So, you know, fingers crossed for today, that can be one of those days. Got a lot to get through um, throughout the afternoon here on Argyle TV. We've got to hear from Ian Foster and from David Wagner as well, both obviously in search for points for their sides for very different reasons. Joe Edwards also sits down with us to talk through the busy Easter period. And we also will find out a little bit about what the Argyle Community Trust have done over the last couple of weeks. While there has been no championship football, but that doesn't mean that it all stops at the football club. And of course, we'll have all the build-up, wetting your appetite for this afternoon's huge Skybet Championship game here on Argyle TV. Uh, We'd better get stuck into it then. So, team news is the first order. This is the side that has been chosen to try and do what only three sides have done so far this season. And that has come away with three points from Carrow Road. Three changes made from the side that lost to Preston a fortnight ago. Uh, Brendan Galloway, Matty Sorinola and Alfie Devine all back in to the side. Joe Edwards, uh, Julio Plagathuello and Mustafa Bundu dropping to the bench. Of course, Morgan Whittaker got a hat-trick against Norwich six months ago. He will be a particular danger for those Norwich defenders. Uh, Barley Mumba misses out because of the second game that he is serving of a suspension. And um, there was a sad news of Darko Jaby. Uh, basically ending his season with a groin injury. He's gone back to Leeds, so he's not involved at all and won't be. But looking at it, Ian Stonebridge, um, the three changes, we've seen those wing-backs and centre-backs being chopped and changed. It's always good seeing Brendan Galloway in there. Is there anything that particularly sticks out from the side for you? Yeah, I think there's there's some good relationships in, in and amongst that, that team. So, you know, Jordan Houghton and Adam Randall, they know each other really well in the middle of midfield. I think that uh, protection they can offer to the back line today might be might be really important. But also, you know, the pace that's offered by Soranola and, and Miller on the width. If Argyle are going to, you know, kind of have some productive counter-attacks today, I think that might be that might be really important. Yeah, we, we're talking about Morgan Whitaker. We saw at the very, very top of the show that amazing day in the sunshine six months ago. He... Hadn't actually scored in about five or six going into that game and then went on that incredible run. He's the only one that's managed to score for Argyle in the last four or five matches. So is it too much to ask reliance on him again, do you think? I don't, the team certainly won't be going out there looking to rely on him, clearly. But the, you know, from Norwich's point of view, that, that will stick in their mind. Clearly, they'll be, they'll be out for some revenge. But I think it, there's that, um, you know, the power of that psychologically... On Whitaker's part, you know, if Argyle can get the ball to him in in the areas where he likes to receive, um, you know, we know Norwich. I think uh, their fullbacks are going to like to get forward. So there's a chance for him to, 
if, if Argyle can win the ball back and, and kind of get the ball forward quickly, that can, can put him in those areas that he, that he likes and, and hopefully with, with the space to do some real damage. You know, the quality he's got is, you know, second to none. We've, we've seen it lots and lots of times. And I think the, one of the key things for Argyle will be, you know, can they win the ball back and get the ball to, to Whitaker in those good areas? It'll be interesting, won't it, actually, just to see how both sides approach this game because of what happened at home park and we'll hear from David Wagner a little bit later on he clearly is stuck in his mind and it's in the Norwich supporters minds the way they approach this could could almost be a bit of revenge but they also have so much to play for too like Argyle yeah they do I think you know much is much is made of the teams being in different places now at this point in the season and you know that's obvious so obvious it almost goes without saying but the the revenge aspect is interesting for Nor- Norwich um you know if they get too carried away with that mm. again Argyle with a with a good game plan today could come and disrupt that uh, the pressure's on Norwich being a you know a home game and, and the form that they're in so the the expectation from Argyle's perspective today is you know neutrals will be expecting to see a, a home win a comfortable home win but as as we said at the top of the show Argyle I think have the the plan they've they've used that in some away games you know the the slightly higher press perhaps winning the ball back Middlesbrough kind of mm. sticks in the mind as a almost a model that they might be able to use today um but perhaps Norwich are in maybe a a stronger position and a, and a, um, with more momentum than the Middlesbrough were when we went there yeah well Norwich do currently occupy the the final playoff spot in the table they've been on a, a great run of form which has seen them climb the table let's have a look at the side that they've gone for uh, for this afternoon's game and uh, it is actually unchanged from their 3-0 win against Stoke 13 days ago. Um, it means that Josh Sargent, who pulled out of his international duty with the USA, is fit enough to start. Grant Hanley on the other side of that, though, not involved at all. He's going to miss the next couple of weeks. Shane Duffy is back after a little hamstring layoff for him. He's on the bench and there are two former Argyle players in the Norwich City 11. Ben Gibson had a loan spell at the Greens uh, a decade ago and Ashley Barnes was playing for Argyle the last time that we travelled to Carrow Road. He is also a man in form, having scored two in his last three matches. Uh, We've spoken a lot about their form already it's hard to ignore but they've scored eight goals in the last two matches they've got Ashley Barnes and Josh Sargent who are bang in form they've got dangers from everywhere haven't they yeah they have I think um you know maybe before we get onto their attacking prowess Kenny McLean's been been really solid and and kind of dependable in in midfield for them you know captains the team he's been a real feature I think of their of their good run um but like we said that that forward four almost uh for them with with Sargent as as their you know, most prominent goal scorer at the moment, but also obviously Ashley Barnes, who's got tremendous experience at this level. They they offer you know they've got got a range of different attributes. Mm. I think clearly um, you know the physical presence that's offered as well. Um, but there'll be some intricate passing I think in and around Argyle's box, and Argyle it'd be really important that the back three remain compact and and they get help from uh, as we mentioned already Randall and Houghton in front will be I think key today. Yeah, it's interesting you mentioned Kenny McLean. Talking about their attacking threat is is obvious, but defensively they've actually been very solid too. I think only one side in Middlesbrough have scored more than two goals against them in the last couple of months. They keep a lot of clean sheets. They've got a settled sort of side of we see with it with being undefeated. So it'll be it'll be tough to crack that too. Yeah, it will. And you know the, the manager's now had you know plenty of time if you like to to put his philosophy into practice. They're clearly in the, in the swing of things with regards to that. Um, but it's Argyle's job today to come and come and disrupt that. And I think, you know, rather perhaps than than sitting back and allowing too much possession, if we can go after them when they're trying to play out from the back, that that may offer those those openings, those opportunities to win the ball back high up the pitch and, mm. and hope hopefully capitalise on that. Yeah, it is obviously going to be difficult. And for Ian Foster in particular, it has been a difficult 13 days or so. He would have felt the pressure after that home loss to Preston. Uh, a fortnight ago. Um, he, however, is hoping that the break that most of his players were able to get over the last couple of weeks can help them as they prepare for a relegation scrap. The idea was always, regardless of the result um, against Preston, to give them some time. Um, you know, so the players get the schedules well in advance so they know what's coming. Um, so they've they've come back in really bubbly, really bright, really... Um, 
really keen to to get going. The sessions, particularly in the early parts of of the week, um, were really positive um, over the weekend. Um, and um, yeah, the, the, the lads have been really bright. Mm. Uh, this is an obvious question, but um, with it being so tight and with into the final stretch of the season, how, just how much does staying up mean to to everybody? It means everything, you know. It's um, I, you know I appreciate the journey that the the, the club have have been on. Um, and the wonderful strides and achievements they've made over the course of the last few seasons, you know. Um, this is a football club that's used to winning games of football and perhaps we haven't done that regularly enough in the Championship, but that's just a, the nature of the beast. It's an incredibly difficult decision uh, division. Um, um, it's probably the tightest division out of the four. Um, and, um, you know, for us to stay in it would, 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 would mean the world, you know. We... we that, that's that's what we're aiming to do. We want to do it in a certain way, um, and um, every game's a challenge. We know that. You know, at the moment, our, our performances haven't been um, where we'd want them. They're not a million miles away, so we're close in games. Um, it's just not falling for us. But what we haven't lost is any belief in what we do and how we do it, and um, we're desperately trying to arrest the run of results and and and, and turn some performances into wins. Mm-hmm. Um, Easter is a, a, a pretty unique period where games come really, really quickly on mm. you know, Good Friday, Easter Monday. But also they have so much riding on them, like you said, so many teams playing for stuff. So yeah. Norwich will be, will be looking to try and keep their playoff push alive. We're obviously looking to stay in the division. There's a lot on this game. How, how do you see that one maybe going? Um, yeah, it's every game, everybody's got something to play for. You know, there's no... Um, is it dead rubber what they mm. would refer to it as? Yeah. Not, I don't see many of them knocking around in, in the league, which is unusual, I suppose, at this stage of the season. Um which makes it an exciting division. You know, so um Norwich uh are on a fantastic run of late. And um you know, we've got to we've got to go to Carroll Road and find a way of of um of upsetting them, you know. Um we're capable of doing that, it'll be very difficult. Um but we look forward to it, you know. Um, they're a really expansive team. Um, they put numbers on your back line. They try and overload you in central areas. They've got some wonderfully gifted players. Um, but listen, we'll, we'll go there with a plan and we'll try and try and get the result that we want. Yeah, no doubt, Ian, he would have felt pretty down after the loss to Preston um, 13 days ago. But the break may well have kind of come at a, you know, come at a good time. You don't want to lose going into a break like that because you stew on it a bit. But it's almost like a a bit of a reset. And you mentioned in there a bit of a mini league between now and the end of the season. Yes, I I find it really interesting the kind of all of the discussion points around the international break. Yeah. You know, lo- depending on your club, how they've done the last result going into it, as you say, and you know whether there's a new new manager or or a fairly new new manager or coach in place. You know, it's time to work with the players. So we hear lots of those messages. So I think you know from from. In Foster's point of view, yes, great chance to have some focus work with the players, obviously those that, that aren't away on international duty. Mm. Um, you know, further chance to to kind of build that relationship, both in terms of the players that are there, um, build their relationships in the system that he wants to play, and also for the staff, uh, you know, to really continue getting to know how he wants to work. So there's that positive of, of time, but I do also, you know, take the point about if you're going in there with a with a, a you know a not so positive result. Um, you know, you always want a quick game afterwards to kind of put it right, and and they've not had that. So, like you said, that that benefit of the of the work they've done, they'll have had plenty of time to plan for for, for Norwich today, um, and fingers crossed that that comes to fruition today. Mm. He he said there was positivity and the players were bubbly and up, and he's probably not going to say anything other than that. But you've got to take him at his word. And how kind of how crucial can that be? Just having a bit of a positive feeling around the club when you are at the wrong end of the table knowing how you know results can affect not just you but the the city and also confidence will be low because of the fact they haven't won so many games yeah. so how even if it's just like geeing yourself up how how important can that be as a player i think it's huge i think it's mm. absolutely massive i think the 
it's obviously a huge privilege to be a professional footballer and to to be paid to play play the game that 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 lots of us love so much um but equally it's a workplace as well and and when you're coming in and, and enjoying your job i think that's a that only rubs off in, in a good way you know you talk about confidence you talk about motivation um you know the the happiness of the players being around each other and and working together with the staff all of those things are, are absolutely vital and i i you know firmly believe and in, in certainly from my experience that translates onto the pitch as well in in the moments when you need to work hard for each other in the moments where you have to make demands of of other players and when staff are making demands of you you know that's that's when that relationship and that positivity you fall back on that and and then you're absolutely you know busted a gut for your teammate who's next to you you're, you're encouraging them and you know that all of that comes from a good place so yeah I think it's I think it's vitally important yeah. mm. and uh, quite a lot of that positive feeling might be about what happened Six six months ago, for most of the players in the in the squad, it was such an incredible day, and we kind of spoke about it earlier. Um, Norwich will have it in the back of their mind, but also Argyle will, knowing that they've been able to do this against. You know, if you look at the the team, there's only three or four players that played that game that aren't playing this game. It's pretty much the same side. Yeah, it's, it was a brilliant marker. You know, having come up um, and been promoted to a new league that you know the talk about how tough the championship is as a league. This was a a day where you know the players demonstrated right we're more than capable of competing at this level and and as you say against a, a team in Norwich who've who've been one of the bigger clubs they've obviously been up and down from the premiership um a few occasions so you know to to do this to them in particular at that stage in the season was um you know important for Argyle in establishing themselves in the league and yeah I think I think it's definitely a, a result and a and a feeling that they can can fall back on today it's also quite I think important to say because I know it's a completely different time of the season but at this stage Norwich I think were either in the top six or they were floating around it and Argyle had just come off the back of a 4-1 loss a few days earlier at Bristol City yep. so you know that that was a bit of an out of the blue sort of result so if, if, we're, if we're kind of hanging on to any omen <laughs> that might happen again today yeah yeah well you know the championship as a, as a league you know you, you see results every weekend I think that, that are surprising um Football does that, but I think it does seem that this league has that, has that kind of quality in particular. So, yeah, why why not? Why why can't we have another away win today? Let's cling on to it. <laughs> Speaking of away form, actually, the the home form we know about recently, you know, defeats in a row, not scoring for for four matches in a row as well. But um, only lost three of the last ten away matches, uh, seven points from the last five, which include a couple of of wins in there. And you know, on another day, we'd have beaten Blackburn as well. So. Having, having you know, been so dominant at home in the first part of the season, unable to win away, it seems now that some of the best opportunities for Argyle do come on the road. As as a as a, a player, is it sometimes easier to play away from home when you're in a bit of a a rut because the pressure is on the other team more? I think I think it can be. I think as long as there's a plan in place and there's a you know a tactical approach that the players are really clear in what's being asked of them. You know, the, I guess the benefit of perhaps less of a less pressure on what you're going to do with the ball, less uh, pressure on the team to maybe be uh, creative and 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 on the attack all the time. You know, that can can feed back into the game in the sense that I, c I can always run from here to there. Mm. You know, what I do with the ball is sometimes harder, but I can always make that run. I can always adjust my position. Those are the things that are slightly more controllable. And I think Argyle have benefited from that in some of their away games where they've they've had a clear plan. They've gone after the ball in particular areas of the pitch and they've been able to win it back and create some chances that has, that's been quite fruitful for them. Yeah. yeah, well, let's hope it can be again. Uh, you can find out whether it can be here on Argyle TV. We're building up to another huge game in the Skybet Championship. All of the details on how and where you can get your match passes from can be found online pafc.co.uk now still to come um, and coming up next we'll be hearing from the Argyle captain Joe Edwards so don't go anywhere
Now, Argyle's longest serving player, their captain, Joe Edwards, knows only too well what staying in this division means to the club, the city and the wider community. He, along with a number of players in the Argyle squad, have been on the journey from League Two all the way up to the Championship over the past five seasons. And he and those players are desperate to make sure that the progression continues at Home Park. Let's go then, boys. Come on. Joe, we're into the final period of the season, I suppose. Last international break out of the way. Five weeks left, eight matches. What needs to be done to ensure we're in the league? Yeah, we actually we said that coming back in on Sunday. It felt like a, almost like a little mini-season. Um, I said we've got the eight games. Um, the goal still remains the same in, in, in staying in this league. And I said it, it, the break was nice, gave us a little chance to, to refresh ourselves. And I said now we've got eight massive games where we need to produce performances um, to get results. And listen, this, this time of season, results is the, the most important thing. Um, and we need to, to find a way to do enough to to get the results. Hopefully, early enough that um, it becomes, uh, like I said, just the, the, the earlier done the better. Um, and yeah, it's just about <clears throat> sticking together and working hard and, and, and making sure we we do the the right things to to come out on top. If we rewind twelve months and just say this time last year, with eight games to go, there was a pressure to mm. pick up points as quickly as possible to obviously win promotion to the championship. Um, and a big bulk of the squad have, have done that and felt that pressure. Mm. Now, this is obviously a slightly different pressure, uh, but nonetheless, the kind of end goal was the same, which is to pick up as many points as possible. Isn't yeah, it, it was. And I think we won seven out of eight, so that'd be nice. I think we'd be all right. I think we'd be safe if that happens here. But no, we have. We've got experience. Um, we've got lads who have been involved in relegation battles before. We've got involved with lads who have had promotions. Do you know what I mean? So we've got experience in this squad. Um, and it's about, like I said, it's about getting results at this, this point in the season. It's the, it's the business end, as everyone calls it. And like I said, some years you're fighting to, to win titles and, and win the league. And some years you're, you're battling to stay in the division. And um, each comes with its own pressures. Um, but each um, shows the, the the person side of you to, to, to fight and, and make sure you come out on top. And... That's what we'll be doing from, for these next eight games. Um, so we've had a good few days training now. Um, really positive mindset in, into these and hoping we can do what we can to, to get the results that we need. You mentioned that um, you know the break was quite a nice thing to have. Mm. Obviously, some lads went off and played. Um, and you wouldn't have wanted to go into it off the back of a defeat. But is it almost like a, a, a kind of, right, this is... We'll draw a line over what's happened before. <laughs> this is now... What's in front of us? Yeah, it was it was horrible to be fair. Um, I did obviously go away and um, didn't have a lot on, so the first few days is is not nice. And like I said, you in football you often get a chance to to do something about it, um, a result or previous results. And I said when you do have a break, it is tough because um, it plays on your mind a lot. It it means so much to to not just me but so many people. Um, and to have that break without being able to, to affect anything is, is quite hard. And like I said, it wasn't enjoyable. Um, but coming back in, it did feel like, um, like, like I mentioned, then a sort of a mini season. You've got these eight games. Um, what's gone on has gone on. But we've got a chance and we're in a, we're in a good position. And um, we need to remember that. And we need to um, use that as our belief going into these eight games um, and do everything we can to get out of it. I've, like I said, I, I know that the boys are good enough and like I said I'll be installing that belief into them and, and making sure we do that so um, yeah there's big eight games but like I said no reason why we can't get the results we need Joe Edwards here speaking to Argyle TV and you can watch the full interview uh, with him on Argyle TV if you're a subscriber um, just head over there now if not it costs just £5.50 a month um, and there's so much content on there for you to enjoy um, he speaks a lot about instilling belief into the players um, Obviously, that that's that's key. But how much of a role can a captain, who might not be playing as much as he would like, and he's not playing today, of course, he's on the bench. How much of a of an influence, or what sort of a role can that captain play in this sort of situation? Yeah, I, I do think it's slightly harder when he's when he's not playing regularly. Um, it's more of a challenge, I think, particularly maybe the um, the way that players that have come in that don't have the you know the number of games mm. with. Joe Edwards in the team um, to fall back on so there is there is that difficulty but equally I think um, you know, everything I see from 
from um, from him in the, when he deals with the press, when he when he um, you know his relationships with fans and his all the work he does for the club. That it's not just the performances on the pitch. I think he's a just such a brilliant ambassador, um, and it does it, you know we talk about role models in sport quite often. I think and in terms of a positive role model, you know for for everyone for for young fans of Argyle, but also for other players that come into the club, he understands what it means. He understands the city. He understands the the history of the club, and and I think having gone through the you know the intense experiences that that we've had at the club over the last mm. few seasons. That's um, which he's done alongside plenty of the of the current squad as well. By the way, um, I think that's a that's a key feature of his leadership as well. Yeah, he he a bit like Ian Foster spoke about drawing a line under what had happened before, and we're, we're going to show you the last ten results, which don't make for terrific reading if you're an Argyle supporter. Just the two wins in there, not many goals being scored either. But if you kind of look at um, the fact that that's happened and he and Ian Foster both mentioned it. I imagine it's something that they've probably spoken about in the change room quite a lot. We've got eight games to stay in the league. So let's put all your effort on what's to come rather than what's happened before. And we've touched on it a bit earlier, but how, how easy do you think it will be for them to just forget that? Like if they, if they were to go behind, for example, to just think, right, well, earlier on in the season, we were able to, to get back and, and come back in. We've got the ability to score goals. So we'll go and do it. Will that still nag on them? These these results. I think the um, that might vary from character character to character. I think it it could vary for for those individuals depending on how well they're playing in the game. You know, we we do. I think everyone in any in any walk of life, we fall back on our previous experiences mm-hmm. to um, you know as a as a source of confidence or perhaps sometimes as a as a source of doubt. Um, and when we doubt ourselves, obviously we we become perhaps. Um, you know, not able to play to our best. So, yeah, I think all of the noises that the staff are making, and and you know, outwardly the players will be saying, "Yep, it's a it's a fresh start. It's a we've got these games until the end of the season, and that's what we've got to focus on." And they will be, but like you say, in those those difficult moments of the game, if things don't go so well, it's then that the the kind of uh, the runner games becomes um, you know more problematic. But two away wins in that. Mm-hmm. List there, yeah. Charlie. So yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Two away wins, not too many defeats on the road. Um, pressure as well is another thing, and you've already alluded to the fact that there's a lot of players in here that have in their squad that have that have been in those situations over the last couple of years, whether it's fighting to get to the playoffs a couple of seasons ago or winning seven out of eight matches at the end of last season to win the title. And it's a very different pressure when you're gunning for a title compared to trying to stay afloat but that can that surely can help if you're talking about looking back on thinking about what has happened in the past mm. no doubt it's a different type of pressure but equally it's pressure and mm. and I think maybe speak for more more than just myself there were points last season where all of a sudden maybe after one result you know as as supporters as fans we we get we have doubts and, and we done. we worry about yeah. things yeah, yeah. um but full credit to to the team. They they absolutely were, um, you know, focused and had the confidence and the ability to to see that through. Um, so again, the, the the number of players in the current squad that can have those positive memories from from last season as well. Um, and and it's it's the skill of them to be able to draw on that perhaps rather than some of the tougher times, you know, recently um, to underpin the performances that can be key. Well, Joe mentioned a lot in that interview, the the phrase hard work, um, and it's something that happens off the pitch as well as on it here at Plymouth Argyle. The Argyle Community Trust have been working just as hard um, as the football staff to help people in the city and the wider community around Plymouth as well. One of the schemes is in connection with the Premier League Kicks campaign, where one of the people that they've helped, uh, a guy called Sid, has become inspired to do some more good work. Here's how Sid did it. We're at Foxfield Close in effort today where one of our Premier League Kicks participants has decided to plan and deliver a free event for the community, which included sports activity delivered by Argyle Community Trust and Plymouth Parkour, face painting, a recycling workshop led by Live West, police engagement with families, as well as free food and drink. All of this was made possible due to the funding which Sid secured from a pitch to the local councillors. The PL Kicks programme creates opportunities for young people who are at risk of antisocial behaviour and youth violence, who may also be from high need areas to regular engage in sport, mentoring and personal development opportunities. 
We provide a variety of weekly sessions across Plymouth and Devon, including this one at Foxfield Close, where we first began working with Sid back in 2021. Sid was involved in antisocial behaviour within his community, but through the power of PL Kicks and engagement with his youth workers, he has changed his life for the better. Not only that, but he has also made a positive difference to his local community through this event today. It's been a pleasure to work with Sid and see the journey that he has been on over the past few years. I wanted to put it on today because basically right, no one would really come out and everyone would be like like getting in trouble regularly with like police and everything and I thought well that's not gonna that's just gonna get like that's gonna ruin their lives and that so I said I said to Becky one of the youth workers I was looked at her and went we should do like a fun day thing down in Foxfield because we used to do it a couple of years ago and now they just then they just stopped so I thought I we might as well try again. Basically, we had a number of Live West customers on the estate come to us um, and explain how they'd had a lot of fly tipping and things like that that they were struggling to get rid of. Uh, we care about the environment at Live West. We want a nice community that people can live in. So we decided um, that we would hold an amnesty day, um, but we wanted to try and make it fun as well. So we incorporated all of the other organisations that have kindly got involved. The brilliant thing about it actually with Sid was that he'd already come up with a very similar idea himself um, and he had gone to his youth workers or support workers and they came to us um, and it was pretty much exactly what we had envisioned ourselves so we just incorporated him, got him involved as much as we could um, and his ideas were brilliant. We sat in a room and we like they asked us, oh yeah, why do you want the funding for this fund day? And I said to them, I gave them the exact reason. I said because it would, it would like stop people from like smashing the area up. It would stop like um, people uh, getting like in trouble with police more. And it would just stop like most things in. It would just like bring everyone together. It, it was incredible. We we received a, uh, an email to say could we help fund a uh, fund day that said wanted to put together for the community so we met we met Sid and youth workers of her, uh, the uh, Effort Community Centre and we didn't uh, if I'm being totally honest we didn't make it easy for Sid we really didn't make it easy for Sid we didn't just go in and say oh you can have the money we waited we waited for him to pitch his business case to us and I've got to say he did an incredible job and he done such an incredible job, we actually gave him more than what he thought he was going to get. So yeah, so well done to Sid because he has been an amazing, amazing young man. He's a great ambassador for our young people around here. He really, really is. And I've got so much respect for him. <laughs> you know what, I, I, you know, I just in awe of him actually for what he's actually achieved here today. I think it's probably more than what we probably expected if I'm being totally honest. And you can find out more about all the good work that the Argyle Community Trust do online at argylecommunitytrust.co.uk. Well, this is the pre-match show on Argyle TV with myself, Charlie Price, and Ian Stonebridge. And we're building up to Argyle's Skybet Championship game with Norwich City. It's the first trip to Carrow Road for Plymouth Argyle since 2009. 1,400 members of the Green Army up in Norfolk to try, or to hoping that these players here can come away with a very, very... Rare away victory for sides in the Championship this season. Norwich, uh, unbeaten at home since November. They've won their last six at home. So it is a tall 
tall task, but you never know, do you? Argyle will be ready and, and hoping that they can start this final push on a positive with uh, eight matches, huge matches to play to make sure they can stay in this division for another season. Uh, but Norwich also keen for the points themselves as well. They are in the playoffs. They're looking to get back to the Premier League after a two-year absence. Um, they are well-placed with these eight matches to go. But head coach David Wagner is very, very keen to stress that they don't think too far ahead of their next game, which of course is today. We only look on the next game and this is what we've done in recent months, weeks, and uh, I think this uh, brought us to uh, into a situation which we now in and where all of us are super exciting about what is now in front of us. And this is uh, this approach we will not change. Um, this approach, this is exactly what we will keep going. And this means Plymouth. There is something what happened, I don't know, six months ago when we played them away. Um, we are aware what happened there. We have to uh, correct something. We are desperate, uh, fully desperate to correct what uh, we experienced there. And uh, the chance is then on Friday at home. Carroll Road sold out again. Uh, atmosphere will be have to be fantastic after this um, short international break and uh, with what is now in front of us where everyone smells and can see we can do something and for this we have to go step by step and the next step for us is is Plymouth so our supporters will be on board for 100 percent I'm, I'm sure on this and this energy uh, we have to all together create at Carroll Road what we've done in, in recent home games to hopefully have another positive result I can't deny that this desire is there it's important to have a calm head uh, but have this fire and show the fire on the grass, uh, which everyone has as well, to uh, show that we we are better than what we've shown uh, when we played them away. It's it's great to come from I don't know 17th uh, in the table to where we are now. It's uh, great to have um, very good um, home record, um, recent games performance-wise, we are very consistent and stable as well, away from home, um, consistently performing on a good level, now got another uh, away win um, again, which was important for us, yeah, but uh, these are all things which grows your confidence and um, you feel that everyone really believes and 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 is, is is desperate to go keep going now i had a few conversations with uh, the one or other of the guys and you really can feel they can't wait to to play the next one uh, especially now against plymouth because of what happened uh, in the first game and at home now again to be at home now again so everyone is uh, super exciting and um, very very hungry and greedy uh, to keep going and uh, this is good to have, but at the end, it's important to show it again. And uh, I have every belief and trust uh, that we will um, try everything what we can do on, on Friday again to be successful. And um, obviously, yeah, the price is clear. Three points, uh, another three points at home. Uh, this is what we can get if we come to our best. And this is uh, first and foremost where we have to be focused on that we again do everything on the highest possible level in ball possession without ball possession um, be as brave and confident in ball possession but be hungry sharp and intense uh, without ball possession as well and this combination in recent weeks and months were top on a very good level and now Friday again with hopefully a uh, super good support and energy from the stands uh, we have everything to to show it again. Well, they seem to be really hitting form at the perfect time at the minute, Norwich. Um, 26 points picked up from the 12 matches in 2024. Uh, they've risen from 13th to 6th since the 1st of January. We mentioned their form at home. They, 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 they're just hitting their traps at the perfect time, aren't they? Yeah, they are. I think, you know, 
clearly the expectation at, at, at Norwich as a club is that they'll be challenging at the right mm. end of the table. Um, and it looks like they're, they've put themselves in the position to do that. You know, the, obviously the teams at the top, I think the, the gap to automatic promotion is obviously too too big for them at this point. But they have a real chance to, to kind of, you know, solidify, if you like, that, that playoff position. So that's something they'll obviously be, be looking to do. And yeah, the, the club, the expectations, the players they have, you know, that's, that's probably the minimum they expect, I would have thought. Yeah, well, unlike Argyle, Norwich did manage to sign off for the international break with a win. A comprehensive one as well against Stoke. Here's the best of it. Stoke City's uncomfortable league position will be causing anxiety in the Potteries, no doubt. Although Stephen Schumacher's men have won two in their last three, 19th and three points above the relegation trapdoor is precarious. Norwich have got eyes in the back of their heads themselves. Their occupancy of the final playoff spot is on goal difference only. And it comes and it's close to the six yard box, an ambitious volley. And Everson, this is palm stung early. Inside, desperate to jump away from that relegation scrap if indeed they can. Now a run forward. And a good opportunity, it could be a shot on goal, it hits the post from Hoiberg. An opportunity, it's a very high line from the home side, and here come Norwich, surely it's two on, not just the goalkeeper to beat, and Sargent does. Norwich have the lead, but Stoke, architects of their own downfall. Sergeant already buoyed by a goal himself could turn architect and then it's clear almost science it was a role reversal Norwich really looked like they've taken control of this game early and they've got a breakaway again look who it is it's science they can't control him get a shot off himself he won't but he's put it to the bottom corner Sarah with it Stoke City do from this corner. A free header over the bar. Sarah with a near post cross. Sergeant trying to keep it alive. The shot's put in. Barnes scores. Barnes makes it three. The swivel and turn was from McLean. They're not giving up. You've got to give Stoke credit here. 3 0 down at home. A cross comes in. Oh, it's at the bar. Goodness me. Hoover with a, a cross come shot. And there is the final whistle. There are boos, there are handshakes and pleasantries between managers. But a bad day for Stoke City, who were well and truly beaten and in the relegation scrap. Well, we're getting closer and closer to kickoff here on Argyle TV. You can get your match passes online at pafc.co.uk. The final bit of build up is coming up after this. got just over 10 minutes to go until kickoff at Carrow Road. Let's get a reminder of the two sets of team news. Argyle making three changes to the side that lost to Preston two weeks ago. Uh, Brendan Galloway, who returned from uh, his international duty yesterday, comes in along with Matty Soranola and Alfie Devine taking the place of uh, Julio Plegathuello. 
Joe Edwards and Mustafa Bundu, who all dropped to the bench. Adam Forshaw, who played in the 6-2 defeat to Argyle for Norwich earlier on in the season, is fit enough for the bench. Of course, Morgan Whitaker scored a hat-trick in that reverse fixture six months ago. As for Norwich City, well, they are, as we've been mentioning, just about keeping in touch with the playoff places. They occupy that final spot at the moment. They have won their last six matches at Carrow Road and they've gone for an unchanged side that beat Stoke two weeks ago. Josh Sargent is fit enough, having pulled out of international duty with the USA during the week. Former Argyle players Ben Gibson and Ashley Barnes both in the starting lineup. And there is a spot on the bench for the Irish central defender, Shane Duffy, who's recovered from an injury. Um, Let's just have a quick look at some of the other games being played in the division today. There's a couple of early kickoffs, which we'll show you now. Bristol City getting a shock result at home to Leicester, of course. Bristol City come to home park in a couple of days' time, buoyed by that. That means that Leicester uh, are off the top of the table. The other game is still ongoing at the minute between Millwall and West Brom. They're into the final stages there, one apiece at the moment. Um, Huddersfield at home to Coventry, who are chasing the playoffs hole against Stoke. So two matches there where it's playoffs against relegation, like the one that we're watching here as well, of course. Um, QPR and Birmingham City is another one that has big importance. But for the likes of Southampton and also for Ipswich and for Leeds, who play later on today, that Leicester result will have huge, huge bearings on what happens at the end of the season. Right, we're pretty much ready to get going here on Argyle TV. A reminder that match passes, if you haven't got them already, can be purchased online right now. It costs you just £10 to watch the match wherever you are in the world. But it's time to head over to Carrow Road, which is filling up nicely. A commentary team of Carl Duguid and Harry Salvage is standing by. Argyle's trip to Norwich is coming up next. 